thanks for checking out this video where we are going to be unboxing the Radio Link A560. We take out this package, assemble it, uh, check the servos, make sure everything works, make sure it's working okay with the radio, and go through the flight walls and take it for a test flight. So here we go. Hope you enjoy this. Couple of things, stickers. We can apply decals. Also, barcodes, very handy for downloading the PDF manual. That's also here in the box. We've got our instruction manual and the official website links. Features on the back. The dimensions A560 for 516 wingspan. Nicely packaged. Looks nice and safely put together. We've got some stuff. Plain. Very, very nice. Very nice. Just have a look through the server here. I will connect the wings for the ailerons. Another servo back here for the elevator and the rudder. I'm going to plug all of this in and make sure everything is centered before we put up in the air. Nice springy undercarriage. Very, very well secured down. Strap for our battery. Okay. Probably been really well packaged safely. Recommend it okay when you get your wings, just gently flex them. Makes it easier for the servos initially just to loosen them out. And here, I'm guessing depending on what unit you've bought, you may get a joystick, which we put on there, a joystick controller, or in my case, I got what's called the T8FB radio. Um, looks a bit more sophisticated in reality, the joystick for the model is also very, very good. There's very little difference. So that probably would have come packaged in there if you ordered the ready to fly model. Do we have, okay, some tape, some packing tape, reinforced tape, that's good. Plugs for securing the wings. Charger and stuff. Uh, spare propeller and washers. Now, this is very interesting. With this particular plane, they've attached uh, a rubber band onto the motor. It's called a prop saver, and it's actually a brilliant idea because it gives a bit of flexibility. If you come down with hard and bang your prop, instead of having it rigidly fixed and snapping, it gives you a little bit of leeway there. Very, very handy plus. Okay, so the first thing we gotta do, we wanna get the wing on, and that is attached in here. That's the one time you may need some glue just to secure it. Just punch out these little holes. So, how do we do that? 
attach this. I would recommend putting some glue like you hoop or some polystyrene friendly glue just to secure this in. It'll just help keep a bit of rigidity. Now we'll just let that tack up for a small bit. We'll give it a few minutes and in the meantime, we'll just check the servos and make sure everything is centered so that um, before we go connecting these to the wings, there's room to adjust the clevises. And you can even reverse the controls if necessary to show that one out. So the radio will already have come bound to the plane. So we do a little more than turn it on. Both buttons up to the top. Leave it settle because there's a procedure. Let the plane settle for up to a minute, and you'll get a series of beats which indicate then that it is uh, it is calibrated. We go through the calibration process in a minute. Squeeze your battery there, make sure it's nice and snug, secure. There's a number of options available. The, the recommended best position is actually underneath the plane where it's strapped in it lowers the center of gravity and it's also more centered so that's definitely the best position just simply remove that while working on the plane just makes it safer we need to go to a full manual mode and just check to see that everything is where it should be so This is where we will be attaching the ailerons and as you can see already it needs a bit of adjusting, it's, it's not quite centered. So there's a couple ways to do this, we can first try it with the radio. That's bringing it back. The little trims here and you just left or right. I'll check that one and see. There. Now the simple process here is we're attaching this clevis onto the outside wall of the ailerone. If you want more gentle moves and turns, you can always put this a little bit further along amongst the holes. Uh, that will slow down the amount of movement in your ailerons when the plane is going left to right. And we attach the other one like that. Look at my eye and they look pretty level. Now, we can do everything else to work with this on before it's tacked up too much. It's just bleeding towards the holes. It's plenty sticky. We won't be taking this off in a hurry. So that's great reinforcement. Next up, we want to check our elevator and our rudder. So this just needs to be attached there. Let's see, center it up and attach the clevis. And let's check our rudder. Okay. Okay, so now that we have the basics established, the plane is assembled to put together, we need to check all of the servos and make sure they're operating in the correct direction. So we'll turn the radio up, we will also go through the calibration process. Radio first, drop it off. I start with the full manual mode so it's not relying on any servo systems. Connect the battery. Now what's happening just there and it could take it could take a few moments is it's checking all the control surfaces and the gyro is calibrating itself. And you'll know that everything's fine when that green light which starts as a flashing green light 
opposed to full grip. Now, we can go into one of the stabilized modes. We'll go to the buttons in a second. I put both buttons up there for the full stabilization. And what we check is, as this wing goes up, the aileron should go up as well. Because what's happening is if the plane banks like this, because of the gust, if the aileron comes up like that, it helps bring it back down. Likewise on this side, it's moving that way. Looking towards the tail, okay, what we're looking for here is for this to move upwards and likewise to tip downwards. If these directions are, are incorrect, so as the plane is about to dive down, we need the ailerons to pitch upwards to compensate to bring us back up. And likewise, if she's climbing up from a gust, we need it to adjust. Just enough of an adjustment there to bring it level again. And the rudder, you check if she's turn this direction, we want the rudder to come this way to have the effect of pushing her back. And all of those operations are correct. In a few moments we'll come to recalibrating those or how we can go about reversing them. But the next important step for general flight, because it's going to come out of the factory and it should be correctly calibrated. You want to make sure the plane knows what is the level point. And to do that when it connected in, we get our two sticks, move them down, like that. The motor spins up to tell us that it has calibrated. So now it knows that this point is a level point. This is, this is where the plane would want to be flying in this position. Not like that, not like that, or anything like that. So that's your plane properly calibrated. So in fact, once you reattach your propeller uh, and you're familiar with your flight modes, there's nothing else is required to be done. What we will do is just very briefly refer, refer to how we go about reversing our flight modes if, um, if these were reacting in the wrong direction. Okay, so this step can be skipped if your gyro stabilization function is operating correctly, if the ailerons are adjusting correctly, the tail, the, the, the rudder, the elevator, everything working okay. If not, there's your little controller in here and just at the side is a very, very small button. You can barely see it there. Tucked away just in there. And if we need to reverse the settings for the ailerons or anything else, there's a sequence, just as it says in the manual. We press this once for your aileron, two times to adjust the elevator, three times for your rudder. So you, you might notice something happen here. I'm gonna press once and there's a sound, meaning it's adjusted the aileron. I'll press that again to put it back. And it's back. Very, very subtle movement. Two times for the elevator. So one, two. Changed. And I'll put it back. One, two. That goes on. And three for the rudder. One, two, three. And I'll put that back. And now we can check again. Ailerons move and adjust in the right direction. So does the elevator. And so does the rudder. Okay, so now we need to talk about the various switches and what they do. The most fundamental flight mode is full stabilization where the plane can fly pretty level. It will bank gently, it won't bank severely and it will keep itself leveled. In that position, that's where both switches are up. That's down. Switch A is up, switch B is up. Switch A, by the way, has two positions. Switch B has three. So that's fully stabilized. That's the go-to uh, mode for taking off and getting yourself up in the air and getting comfortable in learning first out. That's definitely the way to go. Next position is where we leave A up and B in the mid position. 
become one. They call that raised position. It's quite similar to the fully stabilized one, but unlike the fully stabilized one, when she turns the pitches, she won't bite herself. So she, if you bank, she'll stay banked. Um, the next position, which is switch A up and switch B is fully down. That's full manual mode. Now, I've been flying this plane for quite some time and it's on a very rare occasion that I put on full manual mode. Um, things happen very, very fast. If you're going flying a manual, I'd say give yourself plenty of height, plenty of time to make adjustments, nice, slow, steady adjustments because things will happen quickly in full manual mode. The next one is called horizon mode or horizontal mode. And for this, switch A is down and switch B is in the middle. A is down, B is in the middle. And this one lets you basically perform all sorts of stunts and maneuvers. You have gyro assistance, but the full range of movements here will fully affect everything that happens. This is the most fun for flying and you can even get the most enjoyment when you're doing that. Okay. And the final position is called vertical mode, which is probably the most fun or unusual position or unusual mode because this is where the plane literally is flying straight upright. To get that, our switch A is down and our switch B is up. So let's check those out and see how we get on. Okay, so this is race mode. Still have gyro assistance, more maneuvers, but the plane will not center itself once you bank. Much firmer, tighter turns, much more control, but not so stable. You have stabilization, which helps greatly full manoeuvrability but you'll see if you stay banked it will stay banked very close to manual full manual really but you still got quite a bit of assistance with the 660 milliamp battery you get plenty of flight time so manoeuvrable and steady at the same time. Next up is full manual mode. Both sticks are fully down. There is no gyro assistance. And this is something that you really should only try perhaps when you've gotten very comfortable flying the plane or on a very calm day because the plane will get buffeted around. No assistance whatsoever. In a turn, you have full authority over everything. All the time remembering to flick yourself straight into full stabilized mode if necessary, just like that, and you're back. So, as I said, full manual, I think it's perhaps the last mode you'll ever try. Because all the other modes give you plenty of options. But it's fantastic to know that is there.
Okay, and the last mode, probably a very popular mode, one that really is more like drone flying than airplane flying, is full vertical mode, where the plane literally holds itself in the upright axis, something that's very difficult to do without, without any type of gyro assistance. So I hope you found this video useful and an aid in setting up your own A560. You get many, many great hours flying with yours. Thanks for watching.